The Warburg families were bankers and philanthropists with money tracing back from the 16th century. Originally from Italy, family settled in Germany in 1559, again migrating to Scandinavia, England, and the United States. The bank of M.M. M. Warburg and Company of Hamburg were founded in 1798 by Marcus and Gerson Warburg, Max M. Warburg, Paul Moritz Warburg, and Felix Moritz Warburg were Moses Marcus Warburg's grandsons. Max M. Warburg was a financial advisor and German delegate to the Paris Peace Conference in 1919. Paul Moritz Warburg and Felix Moritz Warburg War, Warburg's involvement with Kuhn Loeb and Company was from 1868 until 1964. <clears throat> Paul Moritz Warburg was affiliated with Kuhn Loeb and Company in the United States and sat as a member of the Federal Reserve Board. Paul Warburg's son James was a banker and a member of the Franklin D. Roosevelt Original Bank Trust. Uh, Brain Trust, I'm sorry. A member of Parliament, Carl Johann Warburg, was a Swedish historian, while Otto Warburg was a botanist who supported colonization and agricultural work in Palestine. Jacob Schiff was Frieda Schiff's father, who married Felix Moritz Warburg. The Schiff's and Rothschild families in Germany were friends and neighbors. Paul Moritz Warburg and Nina Loeb's marriage combined two of the world's richest dynasties. The no reason why I mentioned all of this is because of Paul Moritz Warburg, okay? He was affiliated with Kuhn, Loeb, and Company in the United States and sat as a member of the Federal Reserve Board. Paul Warburg's son ended up being a banker and a member of Franklin D. Roosevelt's Brain Trust. Okay, so these people had extreme power. Not only did Paul Moritz Warburg sit on the Federal Reserve Board, he sat on the original. Federal Reserve Board, okay? Now, his story actually goes along with a guy by the name of Jacob Shift, and that will end up being talked about here in a little bit. Max Warburg worked for the family bank while the member, while a member of the Hamburg Parliament and personally affiliated with Emperor Wil Wilhelm II of Germany. Warburg was an economic advisor uh, to diplomats, politicians, and the German military. Appointed Chancellor in 1918, Max Warburg was a leading figure in Germany during the First World War, attending the Versailles peace conference as a delegate a year later. The Reich Bank appointed Max Warburg as a member of the board in 1924, intensifying philanthropic adventures or ventures. Max Warburg gave immense support to the Zionist movement. To get their uh, possessions out of Germany, many Jews used the transfer agreement. Max Warburg, he was a very, very shady character, and it's all in how you look at it. Some people will look at Max Warburg and say that he was a great person, and he did a lot, and he contributed to society, while other people who've actually done the research would tell you that Max Warburg was actually involved in what was called the transfer agreement, and the transfer agreement happened before World War II, and this transfer agreement was an agreement between the government and the Jews. The Jews had to sell all their property and all their valuables to the government in order for them to leave Germany and migrate to Palestine.
once they got to Palestine, they were able to buy all of their merchandise back. Usually when they bought this merchandise back, it was more than what they had sold it for. And Germany made a great profit, a big profit off of them. And Max Warburg was actually a part of all that. Max Warburg worked for his family bank while he was on the Hamburg Parliament, okay? And he was personally affiliated with Emperor, Emperor Wilhelm II of Germany. Now, everybody knows about World War II, but they seem to forget about World War I. If Max Warburg was affiliated with him, and he was an advisor to diplomats, politicians, and the German military, that means that he was also personally involved in World, World War I. Not only involved, but he was involved with our enemies, okay? While he was doing this, his brothers were here in the United States. Max Warburg depended on brothers in the United States for his goals to be achieved. That would be the transfer agreement and issues that he had concerning the family bank. American business ventures allowed Warburg to avoid the financial collapse of, the 19 of 1939, the Great Depression and achieved many of his goals. The Warburg Bank closed in Germany because of the Nationalist Socialist, that would be the Nazi regime, which was actually the National Socialist. See, a lot of people also get the Nazis confused with fascism, and they do not understand, or they wish to not understand, that fascism is the product of socialism. Nazi is an acronym for the German National Socialist Party. They were socialists. They, Hitler liked socialism so much, okay, that he actually rescued Mussolini from a prison after he was put in prison and Italy was taken back away from the Axis. People don't want to remember that. They don't want to remember the fact that Hitler gained power through the Socialist Party in Germany. He learned how to create monopolies through socialism and that created fascism. Just remember that. Fascism is not the opposite of socialism. Socialism and fascism are one and the same. It's just they've learned how to use socialism to create monopolies. Max Warburg depended on his brothers in the United States for his goals to be achieved. American business ventures allowed Warburg to avoid the financial collapse of the 19, 1939 and achieve many of his goals. The Warburg Bank closed in Germany because of the National Socialist. Residing in the United States until his death, Max Warburg immigrated to New York as a, the Second World War began. My, migrating to the United States, Jacob Schiff was a banker, businessman, and a philanthrop and a philanthrop philanthropist from Germany and also involved in the Zionist uh, movement. It makes two people who were involved with the Zionist movements who made immense money and both migrated to the United States. Both married within the same family eventually. Okay, Russia's harsh treatment of Jews was the cause for shifts for Schiff to fund Japan against Tsarist Russia before the Russian Revolution. Born in Frankfurt am Main, Germany, to Moses and Clara Schiff, Jacob Schiff's father was a broker for the House of Rothschild. With his studies completed, Jacob became the first apprentice to be hired into the brokerage. You know, first off, Max Warburg 
participated in the First World War. He was willing to support a government that created gas weapons, okay, and launched them at their enemies and killed them in wartime soldiers, okay? That's why freaking it's illegal for countries to have chemical weapons. Chemical warfare was abolished because of World War One. That's why we have all these issues with Syria now. But anyhow, Max Warburg was willing to support that. But see, once the Nazis came around and once the Nazis were against the Jews, then all of a sudden it was time for him to come to the United States. Okay. Now, this is after years and years of using the Jewish people in order to freaking profit off of their misery. This was years and years of working with his brothers in the United States while at the same time sponsoring the enemy in Germany during World War One. He decides he's going to move to New York City because the heat's on and his bank is closed and the only place he could go is the United States. Shift. Jacob Shift was the son of a man who worked for the House of Rothschild in Germany in Frankfurt am Main. Okay? He was a broker and his son after he was done with his education became the first apprentice to ever be hired by the brokerage that's the house of Rothschild first time ever all right so he becomes the broker a broker for him after the American Civil War in 1865 Jacob Schiff traveled to the United States he became a United States citizen in 1870 and a licensed broker and partner of Bud Schiff and Company in 1877. Abraham Kuhn contacted him in 1875, though. Kuhn Loeb and Company in New York asked Schiff to join the firm. Five months later, after accepting Kuhn's invitation, Schiff married. Solomon Loeb's daughter, Teresa Loeb, bringing to the family all of his European financial connections. Teresa and Jacob Schiff were Frieda Schiff's parents who eventually married Max Warburg. Okay, so before Max even came into the picture, Jacob Schiff had learned from the Rothschild family in Germany about economics moved to the United States he set up a brokerage which went under during that time period he decides he's going to go back to Germany and I've also heard that that during that time period that he's in Germany his father had passed away so he was there with his father passing away and uh, that's when he got an invitation to join you know, Kuhn Loeb and Company back in the United States and he accepted it. Well, all of a sudden, six months after he does that, he marries into their family, the Loeb family, and he becomes uh, 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 Teresa Loeb's husband. After that, they end up having Frida Schiff, and Frida Schiff eventually married Max Warburg. So now you have the Loeb's, the Schiff's, and the Warburg's married into to, to one family. Jacob Schiff replaced Paul War, Warburg at, as Wolf, Wells Fargo's director so that he could become a member of the first Federal Reserve Board, one of the main contributors, re, contributors of the economic disaster of 2008. Lehman Brothers merged with Kuhn Loeb and Company only to end in collapse.